Okay, brothers and sisters, we are back once again at the beautiful headquarters of HAS Productions with Mike Freitag. We've uh, looked at a whole bunch of stuff on this uh, Behringer X32 so far, but here's the big thing everybody's asking is, how does it sound? So, Mike, uh, take it away. Let's show us what we're doing, how we're hooked up, and then we'll uh, do some tests. Okay, so what I have here is we just had these left and right KFA50 set up with manufactured spec uh, settings, crossover points. Um, everything is flat from input to output. What I have here is these two consoles going straight into the processor. Um, and we have one SM58 with this console, one SM58 with this console. Okay, and, and um, they, but, but it's, it's really kind of a direct comparison. This is a, probably an eight-year-old uh, Behringer Euro Rack 24-channel. Uh, you want to start over with that? Next, sir. No, okay. we're good. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah, this is, a, this is an older Behringer analog, and then the the new, you know, all digital thing. And we're going to fire some tracks up and some uh, some microphone, and let you hear what the uh, what the difference in sound is. Okay. So we'll start with the CD first. Okay. We are going to. I have this mixer going to this speaker only. I have this going to this speaker only. And we are going to use this and listen to this back and forth. Listening to both of them right out of the gate, we can hear that the X32 is more pristine on the high end. Absolutely. Um, pretty, pretty full on the low end as well. Really linear sounding. There is some have. extra girth on that old analog mixer, yes. which is typical of analog mixers just across yes. the board. Um, uh, but as far as, uh, as vocal articulation, as far as being able to hear things like cymbals and stuff like that, yeah. I don't think there's any comparison. It's, it's really clean on the top end, and that's, really, that's usually the thing you want with digital, but it's hard to achieve without having to get it from somewhere, right. which is usually your EQ at some point. Right. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is listen to an SM58, again, going on both. Uh, what I'm going to do is check levels, make sure they're, they're equal, okay. and we'll listen to it. So right now what I have here is this SM58 hooked up to the X32 here. Hey, hey, one, two, two, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two, one, two. And then let's listen to the comparison. One, two, two, hey, hey, two, hey, hey, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. Again. Hopefully the sound difference is coming across on the video. Hey, hey, uh, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. Because it, it's, it's a little subtle, but, but it, well, I don't what subtle's the wrong word. I just don't know if it's going to come across on the video. But I hope it does because like, it's definitely, a, it definitely sounds a lot different. It yeah. sounds a lot cleaner. The pre's are very, very linear on this console. And again, it's really articulated on the high end. Uh, sounds real warm on the low end, but again, this one is a little bit fatter, typically in Heron Abandon. And, and sometimes I wonder, if is it really fatter, or is it just that it feels fatter because there's no high end? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, that is true. It, it could that go either true. way, actually. The, the old uh, cut instead of a boost uh, mentality. Though. Yeah, right. Um, hey, hey, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. Hey, hey, one, two. They do sound completely different, and I am absolutely impressed by how this thing sounds. One, two. Hey, hey. Yeah, one, two. Okay, so let's ask you the big question. You didn't even, Mike didn't even know I was going to ask him this question, so he's on the spot. Um, uh, you're a pro sound guy. You got a whole ton of gigs. Um, if you got to a gig and found out that you had the X32, would you be pissed? No. Uh, just the only thing is obviously if we had enough IO. Right. That's, Ob the, Ob that's the big if thing. It was, I mean, if it was if we weren't if we weren't crushing for inputs or outputs, and, and absolutely, I'd use it. No problem. And that is saying a shit ton 
for about deploying, putting your name in front of a Behringer. I have, mean, that's a whole new level right there. It really is. And uh, we've already been over some of the pro stuff that you can do on this thing. I think you're going to, well, Behringer has a backload right now. I think a backload of 20,000 units um, oh, right now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So you're gonna start seeing some of these things, uh, whether you're a musician and you you know you're showing up at the local club, and find out they've got a new system, or if you're a, a church guy and this is what you know the the congregation could afford, um, uh, you're gonna start seeing them. Um, it's very cool stuff. Mike, thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it. And we're out.